Okay, so today we are going to be building a REST API using C Sharp and JustNet Core. So you would have to make sure that you have VS Code on your machine. Then you would also have to make sure that you have the .NET SDK. So you can select the version 8.0, right? Since that is the latest. So once you have that in your machine, um, you can go ahead and go to your terminal now then you're going to use the dot net command to install a new web api yeah so this is going to create a new api template for us that we're going to use All right so in the next session i'm going to take you through the next steps so before you continue i would recommend that you have the c sharp extension installed and also the c sharp dev kit installed too so the c sharp dev kit is a powerful tool that makes uh, you know c sharp and dot uh, net score writing dot net score application very 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 easy yeah so it gives you the solution of spray of view that's you will see in the rider and the other IDs. So, um, so this is how when you install the C sharp of kits, it's gonna give you this look, you understand? So if you notice over here, you realize that our product API doesn't have um, controllers, models and services, right? So it's it's all due to the .NET 8 templates that we have. So the .NET 8 templates doesn't come with, or let me say the .NET 8 templates for the web API, it doesn't come with, you know, those boilerplates. So they're done to, I think it was done to give flexibility and to give developers much more, you know, um, freedom to structure their projects. So I'm going to begin by creating our folders over here. So let me create the first folder which will be the controllers. So controllers. Then I'm going to create the models over here. Too. Then from there I'll create our services. So inside the services, I'm going to create the C sharp so let me create a class over here okay let me put an API controller <laughs> right then in the models to we would have to define a class for the model right the product model so i'm going to create a new class over here called product <coughs> product Then the last thing is the services. Okay. So the services we're gonna have the interface and the provider, right? So I'm gonna create the interface over here. Okay. Interface, yeah. So I product service. Then the class will be product service. All right, so we're going to define the properties of our product model, right? So it's going to contain 
the ID, the name, the description, and also the price. So the ID will be a string that I'm going to use over here. So we're going to do public string ID. Then I'll get six. Then I'm going to replicate same for name. And I'm going to replicate same for the description. The string description and get set. Then the last thing is going to be the price. Public. So the price is going to be a decimal, right? Because it could be 5.0 or 5.98 or you know anything decimal. So decimal price over here. Then get set. So now that we have our model defined, our product model defined, we're going to define our services, right? So our various um, implementations and our declarations. So over here with our products, we want to be able to create a product. We want to, we want to be able to get our products. Then we also want to be able to get a single product. And finally, we want to be able to delete the products, right? So our interface will allow us to, you know, define our um, our various declarations, you understand, of how we want to implement those um, implement those methods. So let's begin with the create product async, right? So the create product async will return Let's for now let's use a boolean value right so that if the product is created it will return true if it is not created successfully it will return false so I'm going to do tax of boo tax of boo then I want to do create product to sync so that one is going to take the product model over here right then the next thing is let me see what's happening over here all right so the next thing i'm going to do the updates update product of sync over here too. so that one will take in the the id right together with the products that we want to update so we're going to do string product id yeah so the next thing is going to be the delete product sync. So that one to we would have to get a product ID, right? So this is a string, not a bytes. Then we also want to be able to get a single product, right? And as well as get all products. So I'm going to do get product sync. So that one, I'm going to fetch our product over here. Then this will get product by ID sync here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, five declarations. Right. Then afterwards, we are going to implement all these interface declarations over here. Okay. So we are going to do that in our product service. So this product service must inherit the i product service over here yeah so my shortcut has done everything for me right here that has implemented all the interface declarations so what you are left to do is to define the various you know business logics that our uh, or that each method has to you know make use of right so over here we are going to make use of db contest right which is from the microsoft entity framework so db contest will allow us to define or access the various um, database operations like adding deleting uh, finding 
uh, an entity. So now we need to define our connection string to our Postgres database. So we'll have to define a new connection string over here. Then I'm going to paste the connection to my database. Here. Yeah, so we will have to make sure that the password is correct. You must match the password that you are using for your local uh, page admin. Then over here, the next thing we we'll have to do is to define our data repository, right? So over here, I want to create a new folder over here called data. Then inside the data, I'm going to create a new data.cs file over here. So the class data. So over here, I'm going to define a new application DB contest class. So I'll call it up DB contest. Then it's going to inherit from DB contest. Yeah. So you would have to make sure that you import the various necessary stuff here. Okay, this is not needed. So do this. So now we would have to define our constructor. So my shortcuts are giving me some suggestions over here. I'm gonna use that. Yeah. So this must be DB content substance of We do contest. Let me just put this over here. Then we'd have to define the our DB sets over here. So DB set of products. So this is going to query and save the instances of what the product model yeah i want to import it here so this should be db contest options of app db contest yeah then you introduce your curly braces Okay, so right now you would also have to make sure that you have your various services registered in your program. Those see effect. So you would have to call this guy over here, which is which is going to allow us to register the given contest as a service in the service collection. Like so in this case. It's going to help us register the DB contest class that you defined over here. And from there, to, we will start to make sure that we register our services. So the product service and the high product service. So we will have to do builder.services. .add. So because DB contest is a scope service, right? So normally scope service are short lived. So you would have to add it as a scope service. So you come and do services dot add scope service. Yeah, so you come and make sure that they are imported. Yeah, so once you have this, you should be able to continue without encountering any dependency injection issues. Yeah. So right now the next thing we would have to do is to define or is to inject our DB contest in the product service. So 
we'll come and do private red only. Oh, the then we will control here. Then in our constructor, we will come and do public product service. So like this. Yeah. We'll come and do DB control. Yeah. Let me format it a bit. Okay. So now that we have our DB controls injected, we can come and write or define our business logics for each of the methods over here. So right now we are going to begin with the create product async method. So we're gonna begin by wrapping that method with a try catch block. Right, so I'm gonna pass in the exception instance here then alright for the meantime I'm gonna do this. So inside the track block, you're going to first of all call. Let me make the method. Okay, so let's let's continue. So first of all, I'm going to do db contest dot add. We are going to pass in the items you want to add to our database. So in this case, it's going to be the product instance. You know, after doing that, you're going to call db contest dot save changes to sync. All right. So after doing that, we would have to. So right now, we would have to sync with the save. And this is sync. I'm going to write a root over here. Then, right after doing that, you can return true after the data is able to be persisted in the DB. Then, over you are coming in the catch, the one in the catch course. <coughs> yeah, so this is how our create product is sync will look like for now. So the next thing we we'll have to do will be the delete product system. So now I'm to write our try catch over here. Then inside it, we'll first have to get the product by the ID. So I'm going to do variable products is equal to db contest dot product dot find the sync. We are going to pass in the product ID. So if the product is not now, then you can go ahead and remove the products. So don't forget to pass a sync over here. So if it is not now, you can go ahead and delete the products. So we'll come and call db context dot remove products. Then after removing, we have to save the changes. The save changes are sync. So I wait. Then, if the product is successfully deleted, we will return to for now. And to the Nova return force. Okay.
so you also have to retain something over here once you could not once you're not able to find the product from the lead that you will come and return for it you can get rid of this then do yeah so this is how our delete products will look like now so the next thing we would have to do would be to get a single product right so over here to we'll come and define our try catch we we'll try catch and pass the section so over here you are still going to you can just come and copy this line 37 here then come and put it here so find a sync will just retain a matching entity from the table right that's that will be the uh, that will be by the product side so once you get a product we'll just retain products so if there was an exception we'll just return now so this has to be a sync All right, so get product by the sync. We have to pass in string product ID. All right. So, all right. So because the there could be a situation whereby the products can be null, right? So first, I have to check if the products. It's now. So you can do if product is equal to now, the return now. Yeah. If it's not now, the return products. Possible no reference return. Okay, you well, let's later on we'll come back to that. So let's continue with the other ones too. My document. So this is going to be for getting all the products in the table, right? So we're going to do our try catch. Then we're going to do verbal products is equal to await the do contest dot product dot to list I think we're gonna return all the products so this should be list of products because we want to retain a list of items so this has to change here product so we'll have to update our interface to match what is in the implementation so that's the like this List of products. Nobody will return now in case you don't find anything, or you can return an empty list. Yeah. Then the next thing we would have to do would be to define our logic for the update product async. So over here we can do the try catch. So with the update, we first have to find the product first. So I can come and copy this guy. Then come and put it here. 
to this will first help us you know if the product first exists. So if product is not equal to now, if it's not equal to now, they will come and set the various field that we want to update, right? So in this case, we're going to do a new decision. Product find the product. So once we are able to get a product, we would have to do this. We would have to okay. I'm coming. Let me get a new name. Yeah. So existing products, existing products. So that there's no conflict with what we already have here. This and this. So we can come and do products dot new. So let's assume we want to update the name, right? So product dot name equal to sorry, we would have to do existing products rather. So once existing products is not equal to now, right? We will come and do product dot. We we'll come and do existing product dot name is equal to product on name so that we are going to reassign the values for the incoming requests that we want to update to the existing product that we have in our entity. All right. So we'll come and do that for the name, we'll come and do that for the description, we'll come and do that for we'll come and do that for the price. The price is equal to product the price. Yeah, so when you're done, then you'll come and call DB contest here. So you come and do so now we'll come and do DB contest dot entry. We will pass in the existing products that we want to update. Then we will come and assign it to the entity state dot modified, which basically is um, allows allows us to track the the current entity, right? So once we have this, we can go ahead and return true. So we need to adjust this guy to match the interface declaration here. So once we have that, we should have, uh, we shouldn't have any issues now. So right now what we have to do, now that we have our business logic defining the services, we would have to come and call or inject the product service into the controller. Right, so we'll come and do public okay let's first define the product service for the way right so we'll come and define the controller the constructor all right so each so the controller here has each of the controller methods over here right which is for the create product Get products, get single products, have this product and the list products. So for the create products, we'll come and call the so we'll do variable rest is equal to await. Yeah, so it's supposed to be create products async. Yeah. 
so this creates product to sink here returns what a boolean value right so you can see that if the response is equal to true or is equal to false then we return a field dependency So we return a field dependency. Then I'm gonna say field to create products. And over here we'll just come and return our created action. Should be a status code of 201. So we would have to come and do similar for the get products controller method. So now I will come and call the service method here. So variable products or variable response is equal to our read dot get product async. So this returns a list of products, right? So over here too, we can simply let me see what's happening all right you can do return status code no we'll comment passing 200 I will pass in the list. Then over here, come and do that for guest products. I can just come and copy this and put it over here. So I'll just come and don't get products by ID. So this one returns Okay, we we'll have to pass in the ID over here. So string. This is a string. We pass in the ID. So over here, if the response are returning the boolean, so fail to update. Then we'll come and do that for the list products.
All right. So we are almost getting to the close of our product APA tutorial. So right now we would have to. The next thing we are going to do is to run the application, right? Then once you run the application, you are going to use Postman to test all our various endpoints over here. So I will see you in the next session. So now we are going to run our product API to see how our endpoints are working. So now I'm going to right click on the product API here. I'll select the back and I'll select start new instance. So we're gonna wait for our program to launch. So once it launches, once it launches, we're gonna see it in the swagger UI over here. So we'll start with the product endpoints. So this is the endpoint that will allow us to create a product right. So I'll just copy and paste one of the sample requests over here. Then I'm going to push breakpoints at the create product endpoint. Yeah. So when, once I execute it, I'm going to step over. I'll step into. So if I should over over the product um, objects, I see these values populated, right? All right. So you can see here that our database has received a new reset record. If I should continue, the response is true. I have to create something over here. I can there is a small mistake here. Yeah, so this has to match the name of this product method here. So it is quiz products. So let me try again. But if you should go and check our database, you can be able to see the new record that was added. But let me try again and see. Yeah, so you can see the response is now 200, 201, and the value is true, meaning it was successful. So I can try same for this one too. So this is the endpoint that will fetch all the various products in the DB. So let me run the case and see. Okay. So let's check our database and see the new record. So you come to schemas, you will come to tables. Then you will click on the tables and We go to view 
uh, a bit deeper. Yeah, so you can see the record over here, three records. I mean, now our uh, endpoint is working. So I'm going to run the next endpoint, which will fetch the whole product for us. So I'm going to step over. Then you can see the product values populated in the line mixer. Right. So back to our saga, we can see the whole product list here. Too. So this um, brings us to the end of our tutorial, which we've learned how to build an API using C sharp, right? And also Postgres. So if you have any questions, you can leave it in the comments and thanks for watching. And I will encourage you to share this video with anybody who wants to know more about C sharp. Once again, thank you.